It's Jill. And Kayla. And we are. I wanna wanna wear your skin! skin. I just realized we didn't test the mic, so I hope it sounds good. I I mean, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, we've been doing good lately. (laughs) That's that's, that's when you'll only be able to hear one of us somehow. So if you're listening to this and it sounds bad, it's our fault. (laughs) Whoops. Oopsie daisy. Yeah, I mean, people are used to our interesting audio qualities, though. So, our unedited. Yeah, it shouldn't be too much of a shocker to have something be a little off. What did they always say about the real world? Like, do they say it was, like, unedited or something like that? Yeah, which, not true. Oh, Radar, I said you could stay in here if you didn't fart. Well, you know. He immediately farted. He immediately farted. When he left the room earlier, he crop dusted us. (sighs) What are we gonna do? Classic. What are we gonna fucking do? Smell it? Yeah, just live in it. Hey, if you've never listened to us before... (laughs) Welcome. Here we are. Um, we are, sorry, I hit you. Oh, it's a, ow. <laughs> <laughs> we are two trash humans in the Seattle, Washington area, and with no, nothing on our resumes. No, except no. Except for the service industry. Yeah, we work in the service industry, we hoard dogs, mm-hmm. we like loud snacks, yeah. And alcohol and weed, and I usually have a diet coke from McDonald's somewhere in the scene, and uh, that's that's us. We... I think we every week we say what's usual, and it changes like every yeah. two weeks. So about yeah, keep listening. You just never <laughs> fucking know. Uh, and... But anyway, we watch Lifetime movies, and then we tear them apart because um... they're asking for it. Did you see what they were wearing? I did. Yeah, they're asking for it. Asking for it. Um, anyway, that's it. If you want to go back and listen to the old ones, you should. We're at, this is episode 36. Yes. Cannot believe it. Holy shit. It is also, well, I guess when we release this, it'll be the last day to sign up for our Patreon, um, and get an extra bonus. If you sign up for the $5 level or above, you will get one of our t-shirts when they're made, which will be as soon as possible. And then the day after this releases, it'll, you'll have to be in at the $15 level. So if you want a $5 fucking awesome shirt designed by a local Seattle artist and printed by a local Seattle artist, um, then get in on our Patreon today. It's uh, www.patreon.com forward slash I want to wear your skin. And the levels start at $2. Um, and then the $5 level is where you would get the shirt only mm. today as you're listening. The, I think that's like the 17th or something like that. No, 20th. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You might have said something different on the internet, but that's what we're saying today. <laughs> um, and then after that, you'll have to be at the $15 level. Yeah. So, super cool. Um, and either way, you should sign up for our Patreon because you get to watch the movies with us live on Facebook and we talk to you. Yeah. Today we had a guest. It was really fun. Well, I mean, like, someone was watching with us and we talked to her. Yeah. Um, she had some good jokes. She so, did. it is really fun. And then the other levels, the top level, you get to watch Kayla make a spaghetti with her feet. Yes. And if more people sign up for that level, she will make more Fetty videos. Yeah, because I'm just really, like, trying to change life uh, one foot meal at a time. So uh, if more people hop on this train, I will uh, continue to show you uh, busy people on the go how to prepare a meal with your toes. Because who isn't a busy person on the go? Yeah. And, like, your hands are busy. Right? Like, you don't even have to put your phone down when you're preparing your meal with your feet. So, just saying, like, let me open up a world of all new possibilities. And it is so cheap for what it is. (laughs) It is worth it. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. But we're going to try and sell it like it is. We've sold it to two people so far. Yes, we have. And they have glowing, glowing recommendations for the rest of you. We should get some, like, video testimonials of the spaghetti video oh my god i don't know i'm really sorry to anyone watching the video of this like my belly is really itchy for some reason and i feel like i'm one of those like (sighs) 
Do it. And I don't like it. Do it, But girl. it's just really itchy. I don't know why. Get it. Okay, so also, if you go back and listen, uh, we always have a babe score. And today, we're trying to get to 10,000 babes. Today, we have 3,106 babes. Shit. We are over 30% of the way to being bigger than Bieber, and I cannot, I honestly thought it would take us like 10 years to get 10,000. So we've been doing this for something like not nine even a year months, yet. 10 yeah. months, and to have like over 3,000 downloads of this like really zany, quirky podcast of about Lifetime movies. I actually looked the other Nuts. day to see what our anniversary was, and I want to say it was, like, April 18th, mm -hmm. but I released the episode at 4.20 p.m., and no we were so shit. close to 4.20, 420. <laughs> God damn it. Missed opportunity. But at least we released it's, it at 4.20. Right? At least we did. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's fucking stoked. So, yeah. Anyway. So, uh... Yeah, hop on that first episode train. It's a rough one because it's our first one, but it's but the a fun movie, one. But the movie was fun. Yeah, the movie was so, so fun. So it's, it's, it's only rough in the sense that like we we had zero idea what we're doing, and yeah. now we have a 1% idea of what right? we're doing. Right, exactly. Um, also, if you could just tell your friends about us, like that would be super tight. Uh, we we talk about leaving an, uh, an iTunes review, which actually we got a few new ones. We did. Um, yeah, we actually got three in one day. Like, I don't what even know fuck? what happened. But that super helps people know about us. But honestly, even more than that, like, just telling your friends. Yeah. Because algorithms are really tricky. And if you just tell your friends about us, they'll likely listen on one of the podcast apps. Like, there's so many of them. Yeah, someone said, um, hold on, we had three new ones. I enjoyed listening to these ladies. I laughed so hard I may or may not have wet myself a little bit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> this was just amazing. I loved your podcast. Oh, my God. This podcast was so funny. I don't normally like podcasts, but I really enjoyed this one. It's very entertaining, and I can't wait to show my friends. We had th three new reviews. Jesus I mean, Christ. they could be bots. I don't even know. Is that a thing? I don't know. But we didn't tell any, aside from saying it on the podcast, right? like, we didn't tell anybody. Like, so I, don't I just, know who they are. I don't feel like we're big enough to attract robot reviews yet. Okay, we're 30% bigger than Bieber. We are. We are. So, okay, I'll stop selling ourselves short, but that's fucking rad. Thanks yeah. so much Thank for leaving reviews, Thank you so much for leaving reviews, guys. Reviews. That's um, nuts. Even if it's the same person, like, thanks. Oh my god, just creating a new profile over and over again. I appreciate your effort and your time. <laughs> Thank you. What if they're a stalker? What if we get stalked by our podcast reviewer? I've always wanted to be stalked maybe. by someone that, like, sends me, like, food on Postmates. So, if we yeah. do have a stalker, I will Please. release my address, and you can, you know, send me toiletries Only for and food, stuff. Though. Only for food and toiletries, um, so I can stop running errands. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, that's us, and now let's get into the... <laughs> and you have, you have the synopsis this week, girl. Oh, uh, okay. So this movie's called Remorse. However, if you go on IMDb, it's not Remorse from 2014. It is on IMDb Apparition from 2015. Not to be confused with the wonderful song by RX Bandits. Um, <laughs> it is a awful Lifetime movie with one scene that is worthwhile. But of course, it's a Lifetime movie with an altern with an alternative title because half these movies that we review were like, okay, I'll search this on IMDb, and it's. A totally different titled movie so it's like I mean I'm sure like someone made the movie was like this is what this is called and then Lifetime got it they were like fuck that no uh, yeah. we're just gonna change it for no fucking reason so they did and anyway so here's the synopsis <clears throat> when Doug's fiance is killed in a car accident by him <laughs> he retreats to their isolated farmhouse to recover from his loss, but supernatural occurrences leave him fearing for his he, anyway, fearing for his sanity and reveal a secret she took with her to the grave. Ooh. Which is like kind of what it's about. I don't know. I think that's pretty accurate. Like I it think it's pretty spot on for for not revealing all the twists of the movie. He didn't seem like he was fearing for his sanity. He totally was. He to he was reaching out to that lady. Jamie like, was fearing for his sanity. Yeah, but he too was like, I think I'm losing it. Like At the end. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fine. He Semantics. thought he was fine. He's like, I'm fine. <laughs> I just seen my ex-wife. It's 
fun. I'm interacting with ghosts. I am a father now of a ghost baby. I feel great. Thank you. Spoiler alerts. Spo- but hey, if you've listened to us before, you know. Yeah, I mean, don't uh, expect anything else. Uh, like, to also, don't bitch at us about giving off spoilers when we're telling you the whole movie. Like, we are spoiling an entire movie for you. So the don't, movie starts don't come with at the us. fucking ending because Lifetime sucks. Like, duh. I think, oh, yeah, wait. the last one did too. Hey, Oh, yeah, what up? What are you drinking? Oh, thanks, Jill. Today... You're welcome. I am drinking a not-expired beverage. I just want to as point that out. You know. because I mean, it's true. Because I usually always have, like, an expired bottle of something. I'm drinking a large Diet Coke from McDonald's, and those bitches didn't even give me side-eye this time because I also purchased a coffee. So... I finally broke the McDonald's algorithm to have I don't know if you've told me. our listeners. I think maybe you've just told me. Like, oh, really? Kayla goes to McDonald's and they give her fucking side eye for just going through the drive-thru to get a Diet Coke. Yeah, so if you don't know, Coke and McDonald's have a special partnership where they get better Coke products uh, from Coke. So their Diet Coke is just off the fucking chain and I'm not, I, I just go through you the drive-thru. You care about yourself enough to get the good kind. Right? I go through the drive-thru just to get a, a large Diet Coke before recording a lot and every time they're so fucking annoyed at me that I'm like wasting their time with just getting one drink. I get it. I'm sure they're busy. Like, I, I'm sorry, but they always throw so much attitude and I always feel so ashamed of myself. So like today I was like, oh, I'm really tired. I'm going to get a coffee and it was fine. So a coffee and a Diet Coke is totally fine. So I know this now. I'm now going to change my habits. Now in 2019, you really got to take care of yourself. Right? New year, new ordering system. So, okay, Jill, how about you? What are you drinking today? I am drinking a Beaujolais. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. It's French wine. I got it at Trader Joe's, and it's okay. <laughs> oh, when Jill offered a sip to me, and I was like, oh, is it a Cab Sav? Because that's, like, the only red wine variety I know. And she's like, no. I don't like cabs. No. Not. It It tastes red, guys. It does taste red. Yeah, it tastes red. But it doesn't taste like a cab sob because I don't like cab <laughs> Um. Anyway, okay, so back to this wonderful film. We're getting into it. It's featuring Katrina Law, who plays Lori, who you may know from one episode of Reba. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or she uh, was an ongoing character uh, most recently on the show Arrow, um, wouldn't know. I wouldn't, wouldn't know personally, uh, but then she was also on Spartacus, and I'm pretty sure I recognize her from Spartacus, uh, which is an amazing, trashy show aimed at, <laughs> aimed at dudes to be, like, their beefcake guilty pleasure watching, but I, I fucking loved the show from start to finish. Um. Come on in. It, is a dog coming in? I think he's gonna go back downstairs, even uh, though he just slammed the door open. Someone and made just it cold in here. Yeah, uh, a ghost just opened up the door, and I think I see. Lori? I think I see a domino staring at us through the door. It's jam. a domino. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, bud. There you um, are. Then we have Jody Quigley, who that's just such a silly Quigley's name. Quigley's a fun name. Uh, his name his name is Doug in the movie, and he was on a whole lot of nothing. But I, uh, I, I couldn't even say an episode of something. No, like, I don't like know. truly. Uh, oh, he was in a movie uh, that was like a spoof of Twilight, and it was like Dust to the Wind or something. Oh like my that. god, or, like, ridiculous! Someone who passed gas. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, someone who passed gas. <laughs> uh, I wrote down that he was in a horror movie for all my oh, horror yeah. nerd friends. Uh, it's called Impuritus. And I think it's about a demon. So, horror nerds, if you've seen that, let us know. Um, who else? Oh, yeah. Then Lily Borden, uh, played by Jamie in the movie. Other way around. Uh, she played Jamie. She play- Thank you. She played Jamie in the movie. She is on this uh, show, Battlestar Galactica Blood and Chrome. And she is a side character in that huge HBO show, Westworld. Oh, uh, she that. plays like one of the robotic fortune tellers. So she also yeah. is apparently in this show that I think it was called like Max of the Movies or something like that, and it's like 
she performs scenes from like B science fiction and horror movies, which sounds awesome. And I would like to find out more about this. Yeah. It just, it sucks because I feel like the characters Lori and Jamie were like the better actors in this movie. And Doug, who really was kind of our main character, was the weakest out of the three. And I kind of wish that he wasn't the main character of this movie. But anyways, it's fine. So it starts in their isolated farmhouse as depicted in the synopsis. Um, Lori, oh, well, it starts in the beginning or at the end, but it's like a really short scene that really doesn't show you anything. Yeah, it's just, you see. You know it's the ending. Yeah, you see a man, um, like, breaking down a hole in a wall. Um, and like, and you're in the perspective of being in the wall, so you just like see a man who looks distressed, uh, breaking into this wall, and then that's it. It's a, it's a very short clip. Um. There's no fucking point. No. Anyway, then we go to the farmhouse, and Lori shows up, and it's raining outside, and she tries to turn the lights on, and they won't turn on. She's like, every time. Which is like, dude, if your power's going out every time it rains, I don't know, call someone. Yeah, call, like, that's not normal. Like, call somebody. You're trying to, like, paint some masks upstairs. Like, maybe focus on putting your attention on an electrician. Yeah, like, just, you seem like y'all have money. Like, call an electrician, no big deal. So, she hears something upstairs, and she's, and you literally see her face like, oh, Christ, like, something spooky's upstairs. So she like creeps up the stairs <laughs> and oh Christ! Oh, oh, call, oh Christ! Call the spooky boys! <laughs> oh, where's Zach Baggins when we need him? <laughs> so she creeps upstairs and she like opens up a few doors and looks into some rooms and she she's like she's she's nervous so she's talking to herself she's like okay you got calm down nobody's in this bitch like it's fine. And then as she's going to check the last room, oh God. a man jumps he's behind on her and grabs her. Grabs her in the As dark. if he's going to fucking like choke her or something. Like, yeah. It is terrifying. And she's like, oh, Doug. <laughs> oh, Doug. Doug, you scared me. Uh, Doug, if, if we'd be fucking, you'd be dead. Like, let me tell you right now. Oh, yeah. Like, you don't fucking creep up on someone in the in, in a Not pitch funny. black, in a storm. Not funny at all. No. Don't be grabbing women from, or anyone from behind in the dark. This isn't a fun, it isn't a funny boo joke. And she, like, at one point, because she's so scared, puts her keys between her fingers. Yes. Which is a classic thing that you do to protect yourself when you only have fingers. Yeah, forget it. Uh, and he, like, makes fun of her. He's like, oh, you and your keys between your fingers. Yeah, like, like, yeah, because I thought someone was going to fucking kill me. Right? Like, I'm trying to I'm trying to fight for my you. life, motherfucker. So, Asshole then, who's never had someone try to kill you before. Jesus. So, then, you know, they go into the bedroom, and uh, he opens up the door. Oh, oh hi, Ridley. Are you going to come here and be cool? Come here I and be cool. Know, maybe. Um, so... It opens up the bedroom door, okay. and there is 9,000 candles <laughs> in... And not, like, tea lights. Like, no, candles. Like, full-blown candles in this fucking death trap of an old-ass house with... You know there's no fire alarms in there. Um, and... And it's decrepit as fuck. It is. Like, this is not the kind of place that you light a shit ton of candles uh-huh. in. So, uh... He, they're then talking, and Lori's just like, man. Well, she if, walks in, and she's like, this is exactly what we wanted. Is it? For what? Is it a wildfire in your bedroom? <laughs> this is exactly what you wanted? Don't, don't talk bullshit, Lori. So, you know, she's like, God, if there's only some way that we could be up here full time, we'd get so much more work done. And as she turns around, he has hit the overhead fan which she has stuffed to the gills with rose petals. So rose petals start flying around the room like little like little fucking comets of, of possible fire. <laughs> like, yeah, like of kindling. Yes, just raining down from above and he's there's on his so knees. There's so many though. So many. And he's on his knees and there's a ring because he's proposing. Dude, okay, and here's the thing. Not only would it not be funny that this dude just scared me, but I am not saying yes. No. No. Just scared the shit out of me. Uh Uh-uh. 
And then you, you don't care about my safety. And you rained kindling down on my head. You're trying Fuck to you, Doug. trying to fucking kill me, motherfucker. I mean, spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler. So we're not about it, but it's fine. She obviously she says is. Yes. It's perfect for her. She's happy. So we we accept it. And then they fuck, and then it's the next morning, and mm-hmm. he's going to the hardware store. She comes outside and is like, forgot something, and he doesn't have his car keys because he's an idiot, I guess. <laughs> And then he gets in the car, and he's like, come here. And she's like, what? And he's like, just come here. And he's like, get closer. And she gets closer, and it's like, he's almost going to kiss her, maybe? But then he starts fucking tickling her and almost pulling her into the car. No, Like, what is he doing? She's off the ground. She's, like, on her waist through the car window, like, kicking her legs. I don't know. This is Um, Everyone out there that is attracted in other people... This isn't how you treat them. No. I, I just want, like, I don't care your gender or non-gender. Like, this, what are you doing? Don't tickle someone through a car. That's hella uncomfortable. So he goes to the small town's hardware store, and it's, uh, it's, it's ran by this older gentleman who is hanging out with another older... Oh, yeah. Hard-lived man. Whose name is Woody, but I don't think anyone ever says no, it. No, but he's, like, he's my favorite character oh, in the movie. Oh, he's awesome. Um, so, you know, he starts to chatting about how he's, like, picking up stuff for renovations. Like, oh, you bought a place in the area. Oh, yeah, yeah, I bought this farm estate just a, a bit of the ways away. And they're like, oh, shit. Uh, like, the the area's, like, serial killer lived there the originally. The house. Yeah, so, like, I guess the legend goes is that the first owner and the people that built this house was a couple, and uh, after this, after her husband died in the war, she uh, was answering ads in the newspaper for Irish maids. They were coming over to America, and then she was murdering them in the basement. And the guy, Woody, was like, it's not a legend. Get out of that house. Yeah, get get the fuck out. It's like, and Doug's okay. like, uh, I don't know, like, I already lit a bunch of candles and I lived through it, so, like, whatever, I'm fine. Like, it's totally fine. I'm a white dude, I'm safe. <clears throat> and then on the way back, he pulls over because there is a lady with a flat tire on the side of the road, and he helps her, and that lady turns out to be Jamie, who we will later get to know a little bit better. Um, but... He's 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 being a nice guy, changing her tire, but he's also being pretty flirtatious with her. He's like, you don't want another handsome man helping you again. And he, like, is trying to also teach her how to change a tire, and she's like, you know, I, like, I'm good. Yeah, I don't, like, I... You're doing this, and I don't want to, so yeah, it's so fine. Yeah, so it's working out for me just fine. And, like, you can tell that she's trying, like, he wraps up, and, like, you can tell that she's trying to, like, be like, hey, like, can I repay you in a way that would get us alone in a room together, maybe with a thousand well, candles and some she- roses? <laughs> she also is like, oh, you just moved into that big farmhouse, and he's like, are you a cop? Yeah, <laughs> and, she's like, and she's like, no, I go running past that, which is still kind of creepy. Still, still creepy. Uh, but he's like, whatever. Yeah. And, and she kind of, he says, like, the farmhouse, blah, 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 we. And she's like, oh, do you? And he's like, you're all good. I have to go now. Yeah, so doesn't confirm that he has a fiance. Like, doesn't really confirm anything. Just kind of leaves that flirtation open ended. So he pieces out. And that night, uh, they are getting ready to go out to dinner with some friends, and you see Lori hiding um, a gift in her closet underneath some blankets before they go out. And then when they go out, they meet the most obnoxious couple. Uh, I mean, the girl's fine. The dude sucks. I mean, is she? I don't know. She's pretty whatever. Yeah. I don't know. She was just like, she immediately was like, oh, hi, Lori. Show me the ring. Oh, that's true. Show me the fucking ring, Lori. Like, I need to see how big that diamond is. And then she immediately punches Lori in the face with her own wedding ring. That's true. And I'm like, I, so already, like, I don't don't, don't, don't like it. But also, the friend 
is like, so how did it go? He's like touching Lori's hand. He's like, how did it go? Blah, blah, blah. And she says something and he's like, you know, it's not too late. It could just be you and me. Ugh. And it's like, I know you're joking and like y'all are friends, but that's weird. Like, back the fuck off. So and the, then they go into the room. Yeah. And he is, they, it's a surprise party for their engagement. Aww. Whatever. <laughs> and, um, and the dude, that's not what I want. Uh, the dude is, like, giving a toast. He's, like, as they say in the old country, which, what? What old country? Uh, uh, may your wives and girlfriends never meet. And, like, everyone finishes the never meet with them. Like, like they all everyone, know this Like, everyone saying. knows this shitty saying. And it's, like... That's not an engagement saying. Oh, like, yeah, sure it is. Yeah, it is. Fuck. Ty, you're not going to be my wife, which means I need a new girlfriend. Because I don't have a girlfriend anymore. He's, Jamie's on, on lock. He's oh, got this. On lock. So, while they're, you know, socializing in their engagement party, um, out of the corner of her eye, she sees a guy enter the room, and she turns to the person she's talking about, and she's like, you told him about this party? And the person she's talking to is like, Oh, he. I, we were talking about it at work. He must have overheard. And in comes in douchey McDouchebag, greasy hair man. His name's Alan. His name's Alan. And Alan, like, kisses her on the cheek, and she finds it disgusting. And she's like, what are you doing here? And he's like... And immediately, Doug is acting like a dog that's ready to pounce. Yeah. And Alan's like, what, you couldn't invite me to your engagement party, Lori? I had to find out through other people. And she's like, yep. And so it turns Didn't out here, bud. that this guy is her ex that very clearly wants that to not be a permanent thing. He says at one point, well, you could have been with a future congressman, but here we are. I mean, he is greasy enough to be a member of our <laughs> of our political parties. It's very so, true. So, I mean, I see him uh, as a congressman. It's a really uncomfortable weird thing and like Doug tries to like push him and then we just cut to them in the car on the on the ride home and Lori's like so do you want to like talk about it and Doug's like no I'm good and she's like I don't feel like it's okay and it's apparently they never really and why would they? Yeah. They it's never lifetime. explain sure. what the real problem is. It sounds like she had had texts with him like a year ago with Alan, this ex, while Doug was really caught up with work. And it's unclear whether anything past that happened. She says in this conversation, like, nothing happened. It was yeah. nothing. Like, we just were texting. You were really busy with work. And Doug seems really fucking upset about it to the point where he no longer is in the conversation. He's just speeding the car. Which is like, if, and she even, it turns him and she's just like, do you trust me? Like, we're going to get married. Do you trust me? Which is like, yo, if you still feel so strongly about your fiance texting a dude over a year ago that it didn't go anywhere and she told you about it. Uh, then maybe, maybe, don't, get maybe don't get engaged. Like, maybe you haven't resolved your feelings about that and you still need to do some work before you're like, let's do it for forever. forever. Yeah, before you're stuck with my jealous ass. Yeah, I just don't understand. Like, it's obvious there are issues that have not been fixed and, like, or not fixed, but, like, worked through. And it se it also seems like they don't have any sort of process for resolving issues. No. Th um, no. And that's fine. Like, that happens in relationships. But if you're going to be together forever, you should know how to resolve issues together. Yeah. Well, at least a, a big one like fidelity. Yeah. And you shouldn't be holding on to something that happened a year ago. If you are holding on to that, that is fair to an extent. Yeah, sure. But you can't pretend like you're not. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to be like, no, 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 I trust you. It's fine. Except, but why the fuck were you texting him a year ago also? Yeah. Except I'm actually not fine at all. So... He, the conversation stops, but he is so angry that he starts speeding excessively. Lori asks him to slow down. Twice. Lori is also not wearing a seatbelt. So ah. where do you think this is going? She dies. Lori dead. So we don't, we don't see the dead. car crash. We don't see the funeral. We don't see any of that. It's just the next scene is 
Um, Doug standing in their old apartment with all of their things packed, like like he's gonna move. And Sadly shitty friend the is there with a beer that it seems like only he is drinking, mm-hmm. and he uh, is like, "Just stay with me, man. Like, don't go to that house where Lori's gonna be all around you." And Doug's like, "When is she not all around me?" Which is a fair statement, but he's just kind of douchey. Yeah. Um, and basically, like, there's no need for this scene except to say that he's going to be moving to that house. Yeah. And it is revealed that it has been six weeks since That's right. she passed. Because this is the only time in the movie where we get any sort of time frame. Yeah, so we have no idea how how quickly or slowly the rest of the movie moves. Who needs to know? Um, but, you know, Lifetime never tells us, so maybe we just don't need to fucking know. Um, so then he... Oh, he also says, just stop living in the past. Yeah, and, and that's when Doug was like, do you know what, living in the past, this happened six weeks ago. Like, me, my fiancé died six weeks ago. I'm like, But he also says, whatever. like, I'm fine. <clears throat> and so it's just sure. this very weird conversation, which I guess is pretty realistic, but of both of them, like, not understanding what's happening. Like, yeah. Doug being like, I am fine, but it also just happened, and his friend being like, just, like, fucking get over it, man. No. So, he moves into the house, and he immediately starts remodeling it. Um, because that's what Lori had wanted all along, and so yeah. he's, he's, like, picking up her life's work, essentially. Yeah, and we do see there's a scene where Jamie um, jogs by the house and realizes that he is back. Um, oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah, and she like she like slows down and kind of like spies that his car is there and sees him working in the window and then kind of like jogs off. Um, so then he eats spaghetti alone in the dark because that's what sad men do, and he thinks he hears something and sees something, and he gets up and he does a little investigation and does the whole hello, and there's just like do 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 creepy music, and then. Nothing. Dude, get a dog at least, you know? Get, like... Wait, what are you, you doing? Right? Like, this is a total situation of, like, you need to get a grief pet. Yeah. Like, you and gotta just, get like, protection. something. Like, he's all by himself. I know he thinks he's, like, well, fine or whatever, but, like, he's all by himself in this farmhouse in the middle of fucking nowhere. Like, if anything goes wrong, he's fucked. Yeah. I know a dog can't, like, call the police or... I mean, a good dog Don't can. call the cops, but whatever. But still... <laughs> Um, then he wakes up, and Jamie has left a pie on his porch. And it's a good-looking pie. It's a good-looking pie, and it has a no, like, thanks again, which is just funny because it absolutely happened at least six weeks ago, definitely longer than that, that he helped change her tire, and, like, just now, she's like, well, maybe I should make him a pie. I'm gonna make him a pie. And it's definitely kind of like a flirty note. Like, you know, and it, it has her number on it. And, um... But he has a 1939 telephone, so, like, he's not calling so her. So he's, he's not calling her at all. Uh, it's, it's a, again, there's, there's a million, uh, mini scenes. And this movie is just built up on mini moments. And they just to each other. Like and it's, it's like, and it's like morning and then night and then morning again and then night again. So if we are jumpy, it's because that's this entire movie. One, I don't feel bad. And two... This movie was fucking boring as all It was all so hell. long. Like, uh, as we said before, every Ugh. Lifetime movie is always 90 minutes because when you add commercials to it, that's like over two hours, so they always keep it at 90 minutes, but this movie felt like we were watching Five the Titanic. Hours. Like, it was so long, and there was oh, so... Oh, no. Oh, is that... Ridley? No, that's Radar. It, it smells like is, burned hair. Where is Radar? He's right out in the hallway with oh, his Oh, okay. Room. I was like, I've never smelled Ridley fart like that, but he's Doesn't right at my feet. it smell like burnt hair? It does. Oh, that yeah. is a Radar fart. It's I just really didn't bad. think he was on the landing. He is. Oh, my God. So then uh, Doug goes to a bar. Yeah, because, and because he heard sounds in the house again. He doesn't want to be there. Yeah, and he doesn't want to be there. So he gets a uh, scotch and soda, because that's the kind of guy that Doug is. I don't think that's the kind of guy that Doug is. It's but that's not. what he gets. No. He sees Woody, and Woody proceeds to tell him a little bit further about this quote unquote urban legend. And he's like, okay, so my brother actually used to own that farmhouse, and he lived there with his, I think, his wife and two daughters or something yeah. like that. And one of the daughters uh, took an axe to everybody in the house one night and shot herself. 
and Damn. he's like, that house does something to people. Like, my niece was a really sweet girl. Like, nothing happened. She just, you know, whatever. Like, it's that house. Yeah. And, and Doug's like, hmm. And he also reveals a little bit more about that original story of the serial killer lady. About how, um, so not only did, like, she kill them... But she tricked them into, she, she, she like gave them ether so they passed out Mm -hmm. and then she stuck them in the basement and then she turned the gas on them and then she literally like listened to them die and, and like, and screaming for, for help. Um, then he's like, so trust me, that house is fucked up. You need to get out of that house. Um, and he's like, I think I'm going to go home and like play with some masks. Yeah. So So he drives home drunk. So drunk. And he gets home, <laughs> and he... He does the classic, like, drunk, scared thing where he's like, Hello! I'm like, I'm in the house now! Are you here, too? And then he has a, an emotional and physical fit where he starts punching the walls, screaming hello. And It's then, like, it's a fair thing, but it's just really funny to watch. Yeah, especially because, like, this actor, as we said before, he's the weakest sorry, actor in man. the movie. Uh, and he just doesn't, he doesn't do a good job portraying sadness or rage. So he just, he just ends up looking really silly all the time. Yeah. Um, so then he passes out in his bed. (laughs) And he literally looks like a college student that didn't feel like going to class today. (laughs) Like, it's so funny. And then, uh, the pie is sitting on the table because he still hasn't eaten it. Um... Is that when she comes over, or, like, then he sees a maid in the house? Oh, yeah, that's right. yeah. He sees a maid in the house, and he, like, follows her. And she's wearing, like, an old-timey, like, maid costume. Like, it should be very obvious that yeah. he's seen an apparition. <laughs> um, so that happens. Yeah, and she has an Irish accent, and she she sees him, and she's just like... Help me. Help me, like, she's gonna kill me. Uh, then she's like, oh no, we woke her up, and then, like, she runs away and the apparition is gone. So then he wakes up, and Jamie shows up to the house to check on her pie, which I would imagine is at least a week later, and she's like, hey, so, like, was it good, or, like, what? (sighs) And he's like, oh, yeah, didn't, uh, didn't eat that, let's do it right now, and he just kind of, like, pushes the pie around on his plate. They go outside, and he actually is very forward and is like, I just need you to know, like, I'm not interested in a relationship. Like, I don't know why you're here, but <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> and she's like, no, 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 I mean, like, I would just, I would just, I, we could be friends. Yeah, she's like, I'm just looking for a friend and someone to talk to. Which is By like, the no, way, not. she is absolutely not. She is definitely trying to cinch this guy. And very obviously so. Um, so then, like, she leaves whatever new scene. He hears humming in the house. And he goes, uh, he follows it into his fiance's office. Which and, is a mask room. Which is a room of different cultures masks that she very works weird. on. Very weird. And he sees a shrouded apparition sitting in her chair. And then there's a crash in the room. And her items have been, like, thrown all over the room. And then he looks up, and someone has used her paint to paint Jamie on the wall. And then it's crossed out in, like, red, like, angrily. So, that's fucking creepy. That's fine. He's fine. But, once again, he's fine. He's a little rattled by it, but he's not, like, if if I experienced that and saw that... I would get. I'd be. Out, I'd be out the. I'd be out the fuck of that house because you could explain the nurse, the the maid thing as it being a, a nightmare because he was asleep, but like this, he is awake. Like it's he the doesn't of the wake day. up. Yeah. Then he, uh, mm-hmm. in the middle of the night, calls his friends, mm-hmm. the like dude friend and and his wife, and he like basically is kind of talking to himself because he like thinks that he's talking to Lori on the phone. And his friend's like, I'm coming over right now. He's like, no, 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 I'm nah, good. cool. I, I just... It's uh, fine. It's I'm just, fine. I'm just calling your wife in the middle of the night because I think it's my fiancé who's been dead for two months, but, like, I'm great. Thank okay. you. 
Have a good night. Bye. Enjoy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then uh, he sees this. It's nighttime again. Or it's nighttime. And he sees the uh, maid again. And he follows her into the basement and gets locked in there. And then the gas gets turned on, similar to what the original lady that lived in the house would do. Yes. And then all of a sudden he wakes up in his bed. And he's like, oh, shit, what a weird-ass dream. Yeah, but at this point he's also just like, I'm going stir-crazy. I think I've been alone too long. So even though so even though he was kind of like on the fence about Jamie, he calls her and they eat pudding in a park. Yeah, guys, they have glasses, like like plastic wine glasses when you yeah. like go to a, like an event filled with pudding. Pudding. And they are eating it. Next to a, a lake with in a, geese. In a park. So that's, I don't know. That's what the kids are doing these days. I guess so. Then she comes back with him to the house. Yeah, because there was thunder. There, it, it, a storm was coming, even though it was very sunny, and there was no... Th- okay. The thunder starts when it's still sunny, and there's no rain, and nothing is happening, and there's just thunder. Yeah, and she's like, let's go back to your place and eat more pudding. Eat and more he's pudding. Like, and he, knowing that the power always goes out whenever it rains, is like, great idea. Yeah, sounds great. So they do, and he's like, oh, shoot, the power went out. Like, this happens every single time. How weird that this is happening Again. Now. Every, uh, every time. And she's like, it's okay. I'll make you a spaghetti dinner. So two spaghetti dinners in this movie. And we'll have a slumber party. We'll stay up all night and try and hunt some ghosts. Because he was telling her in the park that he's been seeing hallucinations. He doesn't know if he's losing his mind or if the place is actually haunted. Both. Uh, both. Uh, he doesn't know that yet. But yeah, so they ha- they fill the house with candles yet again. Mm-hmm. This decrepit, falling apart house. Well, when you have is... 10,000 candles from that proposal, you might as well Dude, reuse Radar, them. Dude, Radar, I heard that fart and Oh, I, I smell, smell it. it. It's oh very Oh my bad. god, Radar. So then, um, Jamie Ooh. has a heart-to-heart with him, and she really, uh, reveals a lot about herself, and she says... That she had had an abusive ex-boyfriend and uh, an abusive father and she, oh, and she's getting her master's soon um, in family therapy. So, like, yeah, she's very self-aware of, like, the destructive practices that she's kind of had for herself due to her trauma. Yeah, and she, she uses the word daddy issues to yeah. refer to herself, too. She's like... I make terrible decisions with relationships. I'm attracted to the wrong guy. Spoiler, um, spoiler alert. Yes, you fucking are, dude. And uh, she has a scar on her neck because one of um, her last really terrible relationships attacked her with a knife. And that was like a quote unquote wake up call for her to uh, kind of stop the cycle of dating like abusive men. Um, but now she's not attracted to abusive men. She's just attracted to emotionally unavailable, uh, hallucinating men. So you're getting there, Jamie. You are, you're getting there. You're just a few more away from and And Doug, to this point that she's just said of her ex-boyfriend stabbing her in the neck with a knife, is like, I have to admit something. Yeah, ooh, I got a story for you. So, you know how, (laughs) you know how, like, my wife died? (laughs) Funny thing. Uh, It was actually because I was driving too fast. Because I was angry. I was upset at her. And we were fighting. And we were in an argument, and I blamed myself. To which Jamie says, that's natural. That's, uh, yeah. People that's... blame themselves all the time. But it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault that you were so angry that you were purposely driving recklessly because you were handling it like a baby and you literally it killed literally your wife. killed your your partner. Now listen, so, I'm not saying not that everyone fault. that has been behind the wheel that has had someone die in their car has, like, killed that person. No, that's not what we're saying. This dude 
uh, uh, like it, it was in, involuntary manslaughter. Yeah, like, that's like, what this was. Like his fiance and was begging needs... him to slow down, and he, he was, didn't, and he didn't because he was so mad. Like... And there were really serious consequences. And it's not that he needs to hold this guilt forever, but he doesn't seem to actually, even in this statement, like he doesn't seem to actually take ownership over the fact that it is his fault. Yes. And it's because he didn't handle his emotions well, which that happens, but yeah. like you have to take ownership over that and say, hey, maybe I should go to therapy because this is some real heavy shit that I'm dealing yeah. with. But you absolutely have to own your role in how your actions created that. And you you should not be around someone who knows the full story and says, oh, not your fault. But you know what? You know what? What? They fuck after this. Yeah, let's bang. It's fine. It's not your fault. Let's bang. Fine. Uh, which, so, Jamie. You know what turns me on? Jamie. You know what turns me on? Death. Killers. Yeah. Killers and death. <laughs> I just, nothing gets me When wetter. I reveal my trauma and someone's like, you know what? I've actually harmed someone in a very serious way before. Jill, I am sopping wet. <laughs> I am. I am. D- don't keep going, because I don't know if I can control myself. It was such myself. a fucking weird scene. Ew, like, the was. transition of her saying that didn't be like, you know what, actually, I kind of killed my wife. Yeah, I kind of killed my wife. Uh, you want a bone? <laughs> like, it was It was just a hard transition after hard trans. It was just very, it was very so hard. quick and so uncomfortable. Uh, ugh, it, was, it was gross. Then... <sighs> We find ghost rose petals. Mm-hmm. Um, the next morning, after the bowman. That lead Doug to this gift that Lori had put in this secret closet. Yes. That he never found. I don't really know what he was doing in his renovations. I think he was just uh, cleaning that one part of one wall. Well, for that's my, all they showed weeks. us. Like, full well, first he had to wipe that wall down, and then he had to sand that one wall, and then he had <laughs> to wipe that wall, wall down again. It was just like the window sill. Like that Look, was it. That was a really, that was a was really dirty. worn down part of that wall. You know, it was more worn down the huh. whole back side of the house. Oh my god, the place is falling the apart. The front side of the house looked fine. Yeah, it's, and he's just wiping a wall. We don't. <laughs> Obviously, he doesn't know what he's doing. We don't know what he's doing. But just stop, like that. Anyway, so he finds this gift. And it's, it's just so weird. Oh, my weird. God, it is weird. He opens it up, and it says... I don't remember what it says. It says, we're nesting. Oh, that's right. And it looks like an egg that would have, like, uh, like silly putty in it. Yeah, in... in it's, it's sitting a glitter in... Egg. A fucking, like, branch nest. Like a bird's yeah. nest. In a box. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it's a silly putty egg. Like, let's, let's be real really here. It really is. It is. He opens it, and there's a little scroll inside that a child has made. This is too much. Like, too much to this gift. This is her announcing to him. Oh, I know. Anyway, he opens it, because he's like, what could this be? And it is a tiny uh, sonogram. Of their baby. She's pregnant! Well, well, Ghost she Her She was still pregnant. pregnant! Ghost Her is pregnant and also developing quickly. Yeah. He killed his baby! Oh, he is hit hard, y'all. He but shook. He shook. What a weird way to announce to your partner that you're pregnant. Like, I don't know. Okay, here's this weird box. Here's this Here's Open this it. really weird box. Now you know we're nesting. Here's a... What could possibly be in this egg? With a creepy little fucking branch-like twig thing and the silly putty Do egg. Do you think she knows or knew that humans don't birth eggs? I don't know. And she never got to find out. Ghost her did. Oh, ghost her did, but, you know. I don't know how ghost babies come out. Well, the baby just appeared. Oh, and, there you and go. And was crying hysterically. So, no, she still does not not know that you don't just egg out a baby. All right. So then he makes a nursery, mm-hmm. which will come well, up again. Well, first, he, kick, he kicks Jamie out of the house. He's like, Oh, she Look. was still there. Yeah, she was still there. She was, okay. like, showering stuff, and he's like, Oh, that's right. He, I need like, to be left alone. He, He's, like, talking to Lori while also yeah, talking to talking Jamie. talking to Lori's ghost, and Lori's, like, watching. And Lori wants Jamie to go, and so he's like, look, you're like, you need to go. I just need some time to myself. And then he is fully entrenched in the fantasy hallucination of, like, Lori is alive in this house. 
The baby is there. The baby is there. He's building this this He's nursery. Built this nursery for the baby. He's starting to get very erratic. I stopped taking really good notes at this point. I mean, they weren't great before, but I stopped taking okay notes because it just was so boring to watch. Yeah. So he starts talking to the masks. He does. Like so. There's like a thir- there's thirty minutes of this movie where it's just a sad man montage. So you, it sees his friend trying to check up on him again. Get out. And he, he tells his friend that he's never leaving the house and that he needs to stop contacting him. Uh, Jamie, uh, he's not returning Jamie's phone calls. So Jamie decides to drive to his house and then cry in her car outside the house. Uh, and he sees her. He sees her in the car crying. He doesn't care. Um, and then he, he's... And then, like... And then there's the the second best scene of the movie, where it's just two seconds, yeah. zooming in on him, wearing a creepy mask, holding a bottle of wine that he's obviously been chugging, sitting outside of the house. And it's just a slow zoom on this hysterically creepy mask, and this sad man wearing it with a half-drunk bottle of wine. It gets weird, y'all. It I... gets fucking weird. I really want that to be my next album cover. Like, it was. Yeah. So. Oh, Radar. It's just. Oh, my God. He is outside the room, y'all. He is. His ass is in the door jam, and he is farting into the room, but it's, like, 30 feet away. It is so I can't bad. tell you how much it smells like burnt hair. I'm just so just glad does. that he's so far away. Because if he was in the room like normal, it would be unmanageable. Anyway. Uh, so him and Lori are still in the throes of this hallucination. And he has ghost sex with her. But then oh, yeah. there's a flash and all of a sudden she's covered with blood. And she's angry. And she's like, why did you have to kill me? Like, and why did you have to fuck this lady and bring her into our house? Um, so this... You got needs, Lori! So this rattles him so much that he's just like, like, I gotta call Jamie. Like, I'm losing touch. Like, I gotta get grounded to reality. So he calls her. He tells her that the house is tormenting her, that he's seeing Lori, and that he needs help. And, uh... And, like... Jamie's like, it's chill. Let's just go sleep together again. Yeah, like, let's go fuck again. So... They're back on. Uh, and they're, like, laying in the bed together. And then, I don't know, she won't leave. And then he, like, he, like, hears... We're, like, in his delusion at this point. Yeah. He, like, hears a big crash, and he goes in, and he sees Jamie dead on the ground. And he's like, oh, fuck. And then he, like, goes out, comes back in, and he's like, oh, never mind. Like, she's There's fine. nothing there. She's fine. So, then he sees another hallucination of a young teenage girl covered in blood sitting in a rocking chair with a shotgun Mm, in her mouth. mm -hmm. And we're like, oh shit, that's, that's, that's the dude's uh, teenage niece. Yeah. And then there's like a jump cut and she's holding an axe and trying to attack him. So, like, once again, he, he's not getting better in this. I really stopped taking notes at this point until the last scene. Okay. All right. Let's try and see if there's just any other thing that matters. Cause not I don't think really. anything does. And then he finally kind of like wakes up to the delusion. Yeah. So like he's still like there's a bunch of, he there's a bunch of scenes where like he's hearing a baby cry and like Lori and him fight. But then there's a lot of scenes where he's not in the delusion anymore and he's with Jamie. But then I'm trying to remember. What what the last call is where he's just like, I'm going to let Lori go and I'm going to move on with Jamie. Oh, oh. it's because um, Lori convinces him to try and stay in the house forever by killing himself. And Jamie oh. walks in on him in the bathroom about oh, to slit right. his wrist. That's and right. so after that... And he's like, I'm just taking a bath. Like, yeah, like, no big deal. I'm just taking a bath with this razor blade. Not a big deal. Fine. And, like, and so he finally has a realization after that, like, I become too tied to these hallucinations and I have to try and live a regular life. And you see him and Jamie being happy. They're, like, they're renovating the house. They're making love. They're eating spaghetti. Who doesn't love a good bowl of spaghetti? Who doesn't love a good bowl of spaghetti? I can't speak to whether it was made with feet or not. Probably not, because it wasn't, like, a really good spaghetti. Jamie doesn't seem like the type. Um... 
And then he also calls and apologizes to his friend that he pushed away. He's deciding to sell the house. And, like, and then there's a final scene where he's saying goodbye to Lori. And he's like, look, like, I need to let you go. I need to move on with my life. Um, I'm, he's like, I'm going to ask for you to not come back. I need to be grounded in reality. And she's like, oh, you think you're ready for reality? Yeah. And then he's like, yep. Except guess what? He's not because then we get this flash of the scenes as rooted in reality. Yes. And turns out, uh, he killed Jamie. Yeah. He's just strangled her. Yeah. The house is wrecked, by the way, on the inside. It like, is. We, we thought it was, like, getting fixed up and everything. No. It's not. Like, a, a man has been losing his mind in this house. He's the one that wrote Jamie on the wall. Yep. He also, he did make a nursery. Oh. Oh. The nursery is the best thing I've ever seen. The nursery is, like, if Saw and Hellraiser... Oh had a fucking baby. There's like a mobile of sharp objects. Yeah, like saws and wrenches. He, when he killed Jamie, he there was like a mirror that was broken. She like threw a mirror to try to detract him. And he took all the shards of the mirror and made a mosaic on the wall. Of just, uh, the most terrifying mosaic. It's just the mirror parts. The baby bassinet is like made out of saws and hammers and knives and glass. Like it is fucking twi- there's blood smeared all over the walls because he because yeah he dragged jamie's body up there and put her in the wall and boarded it up oh my god so then he so starts he breaking down axe yeah. to the wall which is the wall with the mosaic and he starts pulling it apart which okay not only is he pulling apart these wood pieces but there's fucking shards of glass Everywhere. and he's just like i got this and then there's Jamie's dead body in it. Yeah. And it was that, really, if I had just seen that scene, I would have been fine with it. That was the opening scene. So we're, we have circled back and honestly, like, that room, oh, I just wish so the movie good. was so much more like that. Because it was, the movie sucked. because it was just so slow. There was literally 30 to 45 minutes of nothing happening. Woody was the only good part about anything other than the Yeah, nurse, that salty, chain nursery. smoking, whiskey drinking, like old curmudgeon was sick. It needed more Woody and it needed more of that room. Um, and that was really it. And that was really it. Uh, because then he is so shocked by the fact that he's killed Jamie. That he has pushed himself back into his hallucination world. And in his hallucination world, the house is set up and perfect. Lori is there in the rocking chair, rocking his newborn baby. And then to the left of Lori is Jamie. Oh, that's right. And yeah. they're all going to live together. together like a happy, fucked up family in this torture room house. And that's it. That was the whole fucking movie. Happy ending. Happy ending. Wow. So. Wow. I don't know, Kayla. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It was so weird. Well, it was also interesting because I just realized that this is probably our first Lifetime movie that the lead character the whole way through was actually a man. That's like, true. It wasn't a woman. Like, this was, this was his story. And um, I didn't fucking care. And I didn't care about him either. No. So. Because he killed his wife. Yeah. And he also killed his new girlfriend. Yep. Um, they're blaming it on the house, but I mean, let's be real. He just had real trauma again and a temper. Uh-huh. So, you know, it's just like every other Lifetime movie where they're like, oh, trauma is a ghost. <laughs> yeah. It's like, n no, it's it's just, it's trauma. So Radar... He farted, he farted again. again. I, and we heard it. It sounded it like a gas loud. leak. God. Oh my God. Wish us luck. Jesus Christ. But how many fleece blankets <sighs> would you give this shit show? Okay. I would. I said this while we were recording, or while we were watching it. I would give the nursery five fleece blankets. Mm, mm -hmm. Oh God. Mm. No, 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 no. It smells like, it smells like rotten beef jerky. 
Like, it's like beef jerky that, like, was rehydrated no, and then left had. in the sun. He's just had his regular food. Oh, I have, I was giving him training kibble, but those are just, like, he little wouldn't digest bits. that in, like, no. two seconds. No. Anyway, uh, so I'd give the nursery five fleece blankets. The movie itself, I, I mean, the movie, aside from the nursery, I would give one. And yeah. because of the nursery, I will give it two. Yeah. That's the best I can do. I am literally gonna just completely copy paste your yeah. reading because if that fucking room was so sick, just like remember that serial killer movie where he had that murder closet oh. and he had like his With murder a snake Bible, in it? Oh, yeah, man. and it was like, oh my fucking god, why isn't there more of this? Like that murder so, yeah. closet was a five fleece blanket like, movie. So you could tell that like so someone on the set who was, was in charge. Yeah, oh that totally. Movie, yeah, as it was. a whole. Um, but like, this one was not. You could tell that there was like a, a couple crew members on the set of this movie who like were told that like they could just do whatever the fuck they wanted to with this room, and they were like, "Oh, thank God! Like this movie sucks. Let's pour all of our energy into this room," and they just knocked it out of the park. Like truly, Oscar yeah. award winning shit. But the rest of this movie was and so it, slow. It had like good elements to it. Like the Woody story was interesting enough and but I was telling Kayla while we were watching it too like I don't understand why there was even anything outside of the house. Like why did he why did they why did the ex-boyfriend have any part of this? Yeah. Why did he have to get mad about that and kill her while driving? Like why couldn't it have been something tied to the house in the first place? Like, yeah, like she there's no need she to have, have anything in, else. She should have died in the house, so then it made sense why her ghost was there. Right. You it know, just... like, if they really wanted to make it a haunted movie where, like, ghosts were infecting people, then have a ghost kill her in the house, and that's why she's in the house. Right. Like, so you weren't sure, like, is this a ghost movie, or is this a crazy dude movie? And then there was just way too many scenes where it was like, yeah, he's sad. Okay, like, we fucking like, get it. He's a. Why sad are we watching man. an hour and fifteen minutes of that? Like, gosh, darn. Yeah, yeah like, and like, like I said, I'd be fine if it was like, oh, this is a sad man who's seeking help, or this is a sad man that and is like investing his energy. That, but it was just yeah, him sad was, not eating pie. Yeah, and it was just like him staring out a window, like him Ugh. sitting on a bed. It was just, it, yeah, so I'm going to say that that, it would have been a one star, a one fleece blanket movie if it wasn't for that murder baby room. Hi, so, sweet baby boy. Thank you, Lifetime, for the murder baby room. Oh, hi, Dom. Yeah, Ridley sleeping, I know. Mm -hmm. He's a sleeping boy. Your brother's boy. a fright machine. Yes. So, so, that's what we watched. Yeah. That's all, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. I don't want to watch it again. I feel like we've talked about it enough. I feel like we've talked about it too long. We don't recommend it? Don't. I mean, watch it if you want to. I'll take a picture of the nursery, and then that's all you need. Yep, that is, that's it. That's it. Um, join our Patreon, and I'll post it inside our Patreon. Fuck yeah. For $2. For $2. Because, uh, you know, I'm telling you right now, uh, you would, if you, if you watch this movie, you would be like, I'd pay $20 just to see a photo of that nursery yep. and not watch this fucking movie, so just skip it. Yeah. Um, other places to check us out on, um, outside of our Patreon and, um, podcast apps and our website is, you can find us at The Bad Copy. Um, The Bad Copy is where the latest and greatest punk news, reviews, festivals, tour schedules, uh, are apps. And they also feature artists, photographers, podcasts on their site. We're included in that, so you can find us there, but also go check out it out for other material. Uh, thank you for the three new reviews. Thank you so much. Yeah. If anyone else can review us, please do. Just say you're funny. Or don't. Or we hate you. Like, yeah. Whatever. Like, do it. But, like, tell people what you think. Um, if you could just tell your friends about us in general, that'd be really neato because we love for more people to know. And, for like, real. think this is funny sometimes. Yeah. And merch is literally happening. Yeah. Like, it's literally in the works. We are in in talks. Yes. With our people to get it done. So, as soon as it, as soon as possible, like, we're just waiting on other people. So, as soon as we get all the stuff together, then we will have shirts and, I believe, tote bags for yeah, you. Yeah, tote bags. who doesn't love a good tote bag? Who doesn't? Um, so. anyway, that's it. That's all we got for you. I'm Jill. And I'm Kayla. And we are I Wanna, wanna wear, wear Your Skin! skin. Bye! Bye.